Welcome to Buy, Sell, Hold, the sports car market podcast. Market experts and car friends for over 30 years, Keith Martin and Mark Green have come together through their mutual love for collector cars. Keith and Mark will take you on a ride into the collector car market, talking with industry experts, helping you navigate your collector car journey so that you know when to make your own decisions to buy, sell, or hold. Hello and welcome to Buy, Sell, Hold. I'm Mark Green from the Cars Yeah! podcast. I'm Keith Martin from Sports Car Market Magazine. And this is show number one. Keith, how are you today? I am doing great, Mark. It's great to hear. You know, uh, before we start today's show, and we're doing something new because this is a new show, Keith and I are going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the market and so forth. But first, I thought I would ask Keith, why are we doing this? What are we up to here, Keith, in your mind of how we're going to add some value to our listeners here on Buy, Sell, Hold? Well, I think, Mark, what, what I've been musing about is the fact that collecting can really be broken down into what you buy, what you sell, and what you hold. And I th- think by talking to thoughtful collectors like we're going to be doing and asking them, what have they been buying, what have they been selling, and what have they been holding, that will tell us a lot about the personal dynamics that drive the market. Yeah, I think this is going to be a very valuable tool for listeners to hear because you know as well as I do, you attend a lot of events, I do too, and usually when car people come up and talk to somebody about their car, and even non-car people, they their first question is, what's the car worth? What did it cost? Yep. And that's what your magazine's all about. Well, it's about the value, but it's also about the passion behind why people make their decisions. Yes, that's incredibly important. You know, I mentioned the word magazine, and I want to I want to ask you a question here, Keith, because those of us in the car world see magazine subscriptions and magazines kind of dying. And you know, ten years ago, everyone said there'll be no magazines in ten years; it'll all be be online. Everybody will get their information that way. But you guys there, sports car market, you're still there. You're still strong. Your monthly magazine is huge. It's a big, thick book. What's your impression of this? Well, I think we've lived through an era, Mark, where at one time, everybody thought it's all going to be digital. We're going to transition from print to digital, and that's going to be the end of print. I think what we've learned is that the digital reading experience and the print reading experience are two entirely different animals. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen the same thing, too. And very few publications have done a good job of transitioning. Now, you guys have. You have a digital subscription that people can buy. I am an old guy, so I kind of like getting the magazine, but I'm transitioning. I do a lot of stuff on computers every day. I think it's great. And what do you think are the elements about Sports Car Market Magazine and the digital subscription that have kept you guys viable in the market these days? Well, Mark, we've always doubled down on print. In addition to having 200 pages on high quality paper, we also print event guides to Amelia Island, to Monterey, to Scottsdale. We print a guide to Concour. We print a guide to restoration shops. We found that people like to have something to put in their pocket to walk around with and pull out and read. The digital subscription is especially useful to people on the go. Uh, We have a lot of European and Middle East subscribers digitally because they don't have to wait for the mail. They can just pull up their iPad and look at it. So what we've tried to do is give you the best of print, the high quality paper, the good writing, the great photographs, as well as the convenience of digital if you want it. Absolutely. And you've done a a splendid job. And I love the idea of uh, those of us on the go. It's so easy to take these devices with us and learn all this. And you guys have a very dynamic site that works really well. Well, we're going to have some fun today, this first show. And I want to thank the listeners who are listening into this first show. You know, Keith and I, this is a new thing for us doing this together. So bear with us, but I think we're going to have some fun. We're going to be back in a minute to talk with Bill Warner. He is the guy in charge of the Amelia Island Concord, which is coming up here very soon in March. But first, we have a special offer from Keith and his team at Sports Car Market. We will be right back. Here's another buy, sell, hold special offer. Do you love knowing what the collector car market has done when it comes to values? Of course you do. The Sports Car Market Platinum Auction Database puts 31 years of auction results right at your fingertips on your mobile device or your computer, no matter where in the world you are. With nearly 300,000 records, that's right, 
300,000. It has the information you need to make an informed decision on that oh-so-important classic or vintage vehicle purchase. You'll receive all this for a mere $5.50 a month. That's less than the cost of a sandwich. As a Buy, Sell, Hold podcast listener, use the code PLAT50, that's right, P-L-A-T-50, to get this special discount. Just go to sportscarmarket.com slash Platinum 50 and the cart will automatically discount your order. Plus, Platinum subscribers also receive access to the full library of back issues of Keith Martin's Insider's Guides, a valuable resource for anyone in the market for collector vehicles. That's sportscarmarket.com slash Platinum 50. Get your discount today. So, Keith, we're back. Who are we talking to today? We're talking with Bill Warner, the founder of the Amelia Island Climb Corps. Yeah, this guy is incredible. Bill Warner is the chairman and founder of the Amelia Island Concord Elegance, which takes place Thursday, September 5th through Sunday, March 8th this year in 2020. He's a lifelong racer, automotive photographer, collector, speaker, author, and an all-around gearhead. He's worked with cars his entire life. He spent his career as an electrical engineer serving in the Florida Air National Guard for 30 years. I appreciate your service, Bill. He has authored books and shot award-winning photography. Bill started racing back in the late 70s, and he won three IMSA media challenges. He drove factory-sponsored race cars for multiple marks and took part in the 1975 Cannonball Run. Yeah. Now in his 25th year, Amelia Island Concord has become a world-class staple among enthusiasts and collectors alike. So, Bill, welcome to this debut issue of Buy, Sell, Hold. I want to thank you very much for being our first guest here. Could you tell our listeners before we jump into the questions just a little bit about yourself? I think you covered it. (laughs) (laughs) No, I just, my mother said my first word was Chevrolet. (laughs) I've got a little bit more sophisticated since then, although I have to say I have bought a, I have purchased a new Corvette C8, which I hope, I hope will be delivered to me on the field at Amelia in four weeks. Oh my gosh. How cool is that? I'm, ex- I'm excited about, you know, uh, Chevrolet, and not, this is not supposed to be a commercial, but they have kind of redefined the supercar, haven't they? I mean, as far as the entry price and what they've done with it and the options they had, and they, they've they kind of taken a page out of Ferrari's book. You got a base price, but by the time you're finished, you're, you're at a, a reasonable price for a, a spectacular car. Yeah. Well, congratulations. I think that's going to be pretty cool. Well, we're going to start this show uh, with Keith asking you a very important question. Bill, if you look at the collector car market today and you described it in one word, what would that word be and why? Soft. Well, I look on uh, the value of cars being a bell curve. And the bell curve uh, is is related directly to the age of the of the buyers that are out there. And the bell curve is pretty flat on the left side when a guy's about 20 years old. When he gets to 40 years old, he's been married probably 20 years. If he's been successful, he's got a little money in his pocket. He'd like to recapture his youth. So he starts going to look for a car of his youth. And that starts driving the price up and it gets to a certain pinnacle. And then at that pinnacle, he's probably in his 70s. And he's looking at divesting and cashing in and then the bell curve starts dropping off now there's some cars that never drop off there's some cars that are evergreen but for the most part i look on collector cars as being a very nostalgic and emotional purchase we don't need a collector car we want a collector car Uh, to me your want is um is anchored in your youth and what you remember the youth what made you excited in your youth you know i i can remember 1953 going to the Roosevelt Hotel here in Jacksonville, Florida, to see the prototype Corvette. And I sat and stared at that car for three hours. And when I got to be about 40 years old, I bought one to restore. You talk about want being part of what drives the market. Let's talk about a a car. This is buy, sell, hold. Let's talk about a car that you bought that you still remember and the decision-making process that went into it. A car that you will never forget the moment you acquired it. Well, I still have it. <laughs> I bought a uh, 1971 Porsche 911 T, which is a car I ran in the Cannonball in 75. I've had it 49 years now. It's gone through a couple of iterations. Uh, with the uh, Brumos Porsche being here in Jacksonville, you couldn't leave a car like that alone. So 
I got the wheels off of Peter Gregg's 25 Trans Am car and the deck lid off of George Drolson's uh, Carrera. And I built a 27 stump puller motor for it. So, you know, Porsche weenies would probably get real upset for what I did to the car, but it's my car and I enjoy it. I love it. And looking back, Bill, you've owned the car a long time. So given what you paid for it, it's probably turned out to be a pretty good investment. Well, yeah, I paid $7,900 for it new <laughs> back when you could buy a Porsche 911 for $7,900. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but I've spent a lot of money on it. You know, I, it's been painted twice, stripped and painted twice. And it's got about 114,000 miles on it. And it's got, uh, you know, the, the stump puller engine and some other trick things. So, you know, but, but I haven't spent so much that I'm upside down in it. I could make, certainly could make money on it. Let's talk about another one. Let's talk about something you've sold, something that maybe when you look back on it, you wonder whether you should have sold it or not and why you sold it in the first place. Can you remember um, like that? Yeah, I found a Brabham BT-8 in a South Carolina junkyard in 1976. It was the Denny Home Tourist Trophy winning car, one of 12 built, two liter sports racer, Coventry Climax, two liter engine. Uh, let's see, the Hewlin HD6 gearbox, I think is what, what they called it at that time. <laughs> And I, I bought it, restored it, raised it for 12 years, restored it again, and then sold it. I, I bought it for 2,900 bucks. And I, I probably had 40 grand in it when I sold it. And it, I sold it for three times that. And then the guy that bought it for me, who just had to have a Brabham BT8, oh, it was the car of his life. He dreamed about it. He would stay up at night staring at the ceilings about Brabham BT8, flipped it 30 days later for another 30 grand. Oh, <laughs> every car. <laughs> Has a price. Well, what was your favorite thing about that Brabham? It was fast, and it was one of the best handling race cars of its time. That car won the Tourist Trophy. Now, think of this. In the Tourist Trophy, you had Jim Clark in the Lotus 30. You had Graham Hill in a Ferrari 250P. You had David Hobbs in the Lola T70. You had the Daytona, the, the Cobra Daytona Coupes. You had Ferrari GTOs. And this was a two-liter car driven by Denny Holm, and it won the race. It was it was amazing. I mean, it just cars were breaking, cars weren't fast enough, but Holm won the race with it. And here, this car ends up in a South Carolina junkyard. Oh my! And wow. uh, Keith, you asked why I sold it. Yeah, those cars from that period were really pretty lethal. For example, uh, the coolant ran from the radiator in the front through the frame rails the engine in the back you would lay down in the car in a prone position between two 11 gallon tanks of gasoline and of course when you're young you do stupid things like that and then all of a sudden the rules wanted they they wanted a fuel cell in this they wanted to upgrade the roll bar because the roll bar was kind of like it, it was there in the letter of the law but not the, the spirit maybe or maybe yep. it's the other way around and if you flip that car the first thing to break would have been the roll bar so from a standpoint of a collectible, fabulous car, from the standpoint of something safe to race, not so good. So I replaced it with the Group 44 Triumph TR6, which I raced for 28 years, and it's now in the Adam Corolla collection. I kind of regret selling that. It was a great old car. It was like putting on a pair of old shoes every time I got in it. I, it was quick. It had a great history, two-time national champion, ex-Paul Newman, ex-John uh, McComb, ex-Bob Tullius. Um, but then, Bill, why it, did you sell it? Why did you sell your old shoes? Um, <laughs> well, first, I'd raced it for 28 years. Yep. I'm 76 years old. I went to a race with my good friend Ray Evernham and Tommy Riggins. Tommy's a great race driver from here in Jacksonville. One of Kelly's series, Bill's great race cars. And after a race, we were at, a, at the Amelia Airport. They, both of them came up, so we don't want to see you driving this car again. I said, why? He said, it's a good museum piece, but like the Brabham, if you got into a big problem, you're probably going to be dead. You know, it had a single roll hoop, little tiny bucket seat that just came up the middle of your back. And, and they, they would want to put a bigger seat in with a shoulder support and, and more of a roll cage. And I said, well, if Adam wants it for his collection of um, – Paul Newman cars and he's not going to race it. Maybe it should go there. And the price was right. Yeah. It's always price is right. I did the same thing with the Lotus 18 that I raced. I finally just looked at that car and went, this is too dangerous. There's no protection. Um, and that's why I finally 
No crush zones in that Lotus 18. Uh, no, your body yeah. is the crush zone for sure. Well, we're going to take a short break and uh, offer a nice little deal that Keith and his team has. And also a first advertiser here, Amelia Island Concord. We'll be back in just a minute. And Keith's going to talk a little bit about that vehicle bill that you'll never let go. We'll be right back. Here is one of the country's finest automotive events that you should not miss, the Amelia Island Concord Elegance. Now in its 25th year, this multi-day iconic event takes place March 5th through the 8th at the Ritz-Carlton on the beautiful Florida barrier island of Amelia. You'll enjoy seminars, road tours, an RM Sotheby's auction preview, silent auction, a delicious banquet dinner, the Porsche driving experience, and Saturday's cars and coffee at the Concours with over 450 incredible cars and inspiring people. Then there's Sunday's main event, the spectacular Amelia Island Concorde d'Elegance, where you'll get to see 300 significantly historic vehicles. Roger Penske is this year's honoree, and there will be many past honorees attending who are the leaders and shakers in the automotive world. The Amelia Island Concorde is a 501c nonprofit foundation that raises money for North Florida and many national charities. Learn more at Amelia Concorde. Dot org. That's Amelia C O N C O U R S dot org. And we'll see you there. I've been subscribing to Sports Car Market Magazine for decades, and it shows up like clockwork in my mailbox every month. But what about when I'm on the road? Did you know that digital subscriptions to Sports Car Market are just $2.50 a month when you sign up with the promo code DIGITAL50? That's less than a cup of coffee. You get 50% off regular price just for listening here to Buy, Sell, Hold. Plus, digital subscribers receive instant access to a year's worth of back issues and the exclusive Insider's Guide, including the 2020 Insider's Guide to the beautiful Amelia Island Concord and all the spring auctions as well. No more boredom while sitting at the airport or on your flight. To get your Sports Car Market digital subscription at this discount, go to sportscarmarket.com slash digital50. Your order will automatically get you the 50% off. What a deal. Go and sign up today at sportscarmarket.com slash digital50. So, Bill, we've talked about a vehicle you bought, a vehicle you sold. Let's talk about a vehicle that you've got that you will never let go of. Well, there's probably two, Keith. The 911. You don't have to keep it at 49 years. Why would I get rid of it? You know, yep. I, I drive it sporadically, but still use it. And I always wanted a Ferrari when I had a chance. I stole the Edsel Ford Speedster. I had the wherewithal to buy a Ferrari Daytona which I bought. So my cost basis in the Daytona is next to nothing. And if I sold it, they say never, never let capital gains determine whether you keep or sell something, but it would be better to leave it in my estate and get the stepped up value than to sell it now and, and uh, have a, a large tax consequence. That may be the wrong reason for keeping it. The Daytona, is a wonderful car. My neighbors think I have the most beautiful 240Z in town. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, and, and the, the windows leak water and air, and, and you can't lock the door because the locks are lousy, and they put quarter window locks in that fall off on the hot days. You know, they would, <laughs> uh, Enzo Ferrari didn't build a quality car, but he built an exciting car. So, Bill, when you finally got your Ferrari, do you remember what it was like the first time you got behind the wheel and fired it up and realized this? it was your Ferrari? <laughs> <laughs> we always have time so for you, Bill. <laughs> I buy the car. Uh, Brian Redman was doing his uh, tour of Maine, barnstorming Maine is what they called it. And I got the car and uh, the the tour was the next week. So I picked the car up from Kirk White in New Smyrna, and I'm driving it back to Jacksonville. It got a little wheel vibration in it, so I ship it up by Reliable, one of our sponsors. I would always ship by Reliable. Uh, I shipped it up to Wayne Carini's shop in Portland, Connecticut. I said, hey, will you just go through the car, change your oil, make sure everything's all right, because Jane and I are going to do a 1,000-mile trip in Maine. Yeah, no problem. So we fly to Hartford, pick up the car. Beautiful spring day. We're driving up to see Bob Bear in Maine, who has a wonderful collection of cars. We're going along, and our eyes are watering, and we're smelling exhaust fumes. And 
Jane says, what is, what is all this? I said, ah, well, once you run the windows up, we'll turn on the air conditioning. Well, my window goes, Zoop, and then her window goes. Zoop. So we drive along and we get up to Bob Bear's place and I take the door panel off. And evidently this is a current, uh, a common occurrence in Ferrari Daytonas. Uh, there's a little, uh, someone had taken a Sharpie and drawn the pattern for the cable on the inside of the door panel so I could fix it again. <laughs> so I got the window to go up. It wouldn't go down, but it would go up. So that was okay. So the next day we leave Bob Bears and we're going over to Portland, Maine. And that starts raining and Jane points out that water is pouring in under the windshield on this car. So she's taking paper towels and wrapping them up around the bottom of the windshield to keep the mouse, mouse, mouse fuzz dashboard from being stained. And we get up to um, a hotel. The next morning, I start up. As I back up, I feel a little pop. I said, hmm, must be the handbrake releasing or something. you know. And so I go on. Every time I start the car up, I feel a little pop. And didn't give it much thought. And then we picked up a flat tire and couldn't find a Michelin tube in all of state, our state of Maine for an XWX tire. We were going along and we finished the tour. So we're leaving to go back to Hartford to leave the car with Wayne. And I get to the toll gate and I decide this is a good time to shower down on this thing, accelerate out of here. And as I do, the car goes into all sorts of vibrations and shutters that won't go more than about 15 or 20 miles an hour. And so I, I go up the, uh, exit ramp and uh, parking in an abandoned Exxon station. And I check and 23 spokes on the left rear wheel had broken. I called Wayne Carini and he came out with a flatbed truck in a matching yellow to the Ferrari. It was very nice. It was fly yellow. <laughs> nice job, <laughs> Wayne. And Jane looks at me. She says, what are you thinking? I said, you know, at that time I was what, 64 years old. I said, I'm 64 years old, and I really have wanted a Ferrari all my life. And the first person to go come by here with a Ford Fusion and fifteen hundred dollars, <laughs> I get back home, fly home, and Wayne's fixing the car. It turns out, well, I, Chuck Queener, who's our art director on the on the magazine, is up in Stamford, Connecticut. He was one of the founders of the Ferrari Club. He called me and said, "Hey, how was the tour?" I said, "Well, I talked about the exhaust fumes." He said, "Yeah, they all do that." Spiders are worse. I said, oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I don't have a $2 million spider if it's worse. You know? And I talked about the, the, the power windows. I said, yeah, they're terrible. Didn't you go in the toolkit? Ferrari knew the window lifts were bad, so instead of fixing them, they put a crank handle in there. Right. Um, I didn't crank handle in my toolkit, so I had to get one of those. So I talked about the little uh, popping of the spokes on the wire wheels. He said, yeah, Daytona coupes aren't supposed to have wire wheels on too heavy. You're supposed to have alloys. It says people retrofit them with wire wheels because they look neat. When we found out these wire wheels were rewired by Dayton when they should have been rewired by Barani, and they used the wrong nipples and the wrong spokes and everything. So I use Van Nuys uh, Wheel Company now for wire wheels. They're the best. Uh, and I put a set of alloys on the car. But at the end, I said, and then the water was coming under the windshield. It says, ah, they all do. You ought to be glad it didn't delaminate. And I said, I couldn't lock the car to get the key lights. Don't work. No. And the quarter windows, you can't lock those because the little locks fall off. He says, yeah. I said, Chuck, why didn't you tell me this before I blew the money on this car? He said, you had to join the club. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> you know, you can romanticize about some of these cars from our youth, but in actuality, they were pretty lousy. But you don't know that until you own one. And that's why you can read all the reports. It's when you get behind the wheel and all this stuff starts happening. That car made stories for you, Bill. The Ford Fusion was not going to make you any stories. Uh, not unless I hold up a 7-Eleven or something. Like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Was there a price that you'd let that Ferrari go for? Well, Mark, you know the answer to that question, certainly. Every car has its price, but I don't want it to go away. I'll never have another one. Yeah, too many good stories, right? I, I guess, and it's it's a nice car. It drives. I put the electric power steering in it, which they needed. Uh, Luigi Canetti told me that when they were selling Daytonas when they were new in New York, they'd put fifty pounds of air in the front tires, so when they demonstrated <laughs> it, the guy could drive it. After they'd wow. signed the papers and delivered the car, they put thirty-two in it. You know, you'd have to be Arnold Schwarzenegger to get it out of the parking lot. I think, Bill, too, when you say you'd never have another one, I think all of us are reaching a stage in our collecting where we say, OK, I've got that one. And if I sell it, I'm not buying another one. That's exactly right, Keith. I, I tell you what my okay. latest project is, and I'm just finishing. I bought off 
off of eBay. When I, when I was doing the Mila Mila a couple of years ago, I couldn't sleep at night. So I go on eBay looking for things. And I bought a 63 Buick Riviera, which I think is one of the best looking cars of the 60. And I'm just finishing it up now. Wow. It, it's a nice driver and a nice looking car. You know, it drives like a 50 year old car. This doesn't apply to the Buick, but I tell people sometimes there's cars better hanging as a picture on your wall than leaking oil in your garage. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, let's move on to what we like to call the ultimate dream ride. This is a vehicle that you don't already own, but it's a car that ticks all the boxes for you at this point in your collecting life. I would love for you to share with us thoughts about design, looks, engineering, usability, a fun factor that would apply to this dream vehicle that you'd love to have in your garage. Not the most expensive car, but the oh. one that you think is the most satisfying, complete experience. You just ruined it for me, Keith. I was going to do my dream list. My dream car, if I could only have one, would probably be a 1938 Alfa Romeo 2900 by Turin. You know, yeah. there's, there's one here in town. And every time I see it, it's just, well, it's never on the road. It's in the museum. But every time I see it, it just takes my breath away. I got to drive uh, Ray Shear's car, which was the ex-Ralph Lauren car. I was out at Ray Shear's, and he lives in Westlake, California. I said, Ray, that's my favorite car. He said, well, go, let's go drive it. I said, I want to drive Westlake, California traffic at noon. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, let's drive it. So I hop in, and the first thing you find out is, like many old Alphas, the gas is in the middle, the brakes on the right, and the clutch is yes. on the left. You know? Yes, yes. So you had to really concentrate for what you're doing. And you're in noon traffic in northern L.A. Ugh. in a car worth about $30 million Ouch. or more. Yeah. And we drove around, came came back after about 20 minutes, and Ray was with me. He said, well, how'd you like it? I said, I liked the car, but I didn't like the experience. I, was, I couldn't savor the car for fear of something going wrong. Right. That's my one dream car. Five cars I liked. I have a Ford GT, and it's really nice. I would have liked to have had an original Ford GT40, uh, probably a Porsche RS60 Spider. The two Ferraris, I think, are the most beautiful are the uh, 250 GT short wheelbase Berlinetta and the uh, Series 1 Cabriolet. But all those cars are out of my reach. I'm going to sell a car this year at uh, RM I'm at Amelia. It's a month's jet I've had for about 20 years. You, you wrote about a month's jet for us in Sports Car Market one time. Yes. Yeah. This, this one is a wonderful, rich, metallic purple yeah. with a white vinyl iguana skin interior. It's totally tasteless. Wow. Cool. Well, that's the part of uh, us car guys sitting around and dreaming of what could be, right? I mean, it's just a, a piece of that. I don't think I answered the question on, on an affordable car that I like. I think probably a 66 or 67 small block Corvette Roadster lift off hard top, four speed with air. If you want to get specific, and 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 uh, metallic blue, maybe. And they keep changing the names of the blue. And I always like Nassau blue. But those cars too, Bill. You could you could drive that car with no fear of rock ships. Well, the nice thing is if it breaks, there's a Chevy dealer around yeah. the corner. That's right. And you don't have so much of your net worth tied up in it that your financial advisor is checking on you each time you take it out. There you go. Let's talk a little bit about Amelia Island Concours. Um, you're in your 25th year here, and it's just such, it's one of the events to attend. How has today's collector car market affected the Concours? Does it have any effect on it for you? Not really. When we, when we get, to get, get to put the show together, it goes together in a couple of pieces. The first one is getting our honoree, lining up our honoree, which this year we're just absolutely thrilled to have Roger Penske. Yeah. I mean, look at what he's done in the last year. Oh, won oh the Indy gosh. 500, bought, bought the IndyCar Series, bought the Indianapolis Speedway, won the Presidential Medal of Freedom. And now he comes to Amelia Island. I mean, could, could our timing be any better? Impeccable. And then then we we look at we look, we go to the various manufacturers and and say, okay, what what do you what's your plans ahead? What can we do to tell the, your story uh, on the field? So this year the C8 Corvette, and we were going to do it last year. Of course, the car backed up a year, and um, we've got all the prototype mid-engine Corvettes. In fact, we've got one that hadn't been seen in public called Corvette GS2, which was a Frank Winchell project car done for to develop the Chaparral. And then we've got a rear-engine Corvette coming. 
which wow. is uh, one of one that was chopped up. Pieces were bought at Smoky Unix auction, and it's been restored. It's it's still going together as we speak. I talked to the restorer last night. He says when it's when it gets to the show field, it'll be sticky. I said that's okay. <laughs> it's tremendous. And then then we sit down and uh, we think about it's a hundredth anniversary of Sky Yeti. So we're doing uh, Scaglietti cars. We're doing the, uh, a class of, of production cars, or if you can call them production, semi-production, uh, for all Ferraris except one, which is a Corvette, Scaglietti Corvette. And then we're doing competition Scaglietti cars. We're doing um, the cars of Penske, cars that Roger Penske drove, cars that are Penske racing. And we were going to do all the Indy winners, but the logistics of moving them around were too much. So we, uh, Roger said, why don't we do one for each decade? So we, we're doing from the Mark Donahue uh, McLaren, which won in 73, to Pagano's car, which won last year. One for each decade. And uh, we always like doing motorcycles. We do a motorcycle class. And then we get a six-pack of Guinness, and we finish it off, and we decide what goofy class we're going to do. <laughs> You know, we did cars of the Cowboys. We did great hunting cars with the King Ranch Buick. Which I wore 10 years to get the King Ranch Buick here. Uh, you know, with a sterling silver tooled trim, 50 Buick convertible gun racks and all that. That was that was a thrill to do that and to get that car. And it'll never come out again, from what I'm told. Uh, not that they're mad at us. It's just it stays in a museum all the time. Uh, so this year we're doing a class called That's Cute. So that someone who knows nothing about cars would walk up and go, that's cute. You know, we'll have a Fiat Jolly and I set a, 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 a one of the newer cars would be a Nissan Figaro uh, Fiat double bubble. Something that's, that yeah. just come, comes under the description of cute. This is cool. Well, it's absolutely fantastic. You know, Bill, as always, and you've been a guest several times on my Cars yeah! podcast, you always take us on a wonderful ride. I really want to thank you for being part of our inaugural show here that Keith and I are launching. Uh, you add so much credible, valuable information. If there was maybe one little piece of wisdom or advice you would suggest to people who are interested in collecting cars, buying, holding, or selling, what would that little piece of advice be? It's a piece of advice that Keith gives, that everybody around cars gives. It's no surprise. Buy what you like. If it goes up in value, all the better. If it doesn't and it goes down, you at least have something you like. Every single car I ever bought to make a profit on lost me money. Every car I bought because I was passionate about it was just fine. You heard it from the best, listeners. That's the way to buy a collector car. Absolutely. So you asked me well, one, other, one other thing. One car I wish I could have kept, but it was just too valuable too was the Edsel Ford Speedster, which I found in a garage in Orange City, Florida. That was probably the most significant car I ever found. You said you found that in a in a barn or garage. How did you come across that? I had heard rumors that the Edsel Ford Speedster was somewhere around Deland, Florida, and I was judging at uh, Meadowbrook with Michael Lamb. And I remember he wrote about the car, and he remembered the guy's name, and I googled the name and called him up and asked. Me if you'd bring the car to Amelia to show it because it hadn't been seen in about 50 years. And his answer was, I don't want to show it, I want to sell it. So it is exactly uh, 92 miles to Deland from Jacksonville, and I was there in less than an hour. Using your cannonball skill to get there very uh, yeah, quick. We, we did. I wasn't going to waste any time getting down there on that one. <laughs> That's very cool. Well, listen, uh, what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about the Amelia Island Concord? Go on our website, www.amelia, A-M-E-L-I-A, concour, C-O-N-C-O-U-R-S, dot org. There you go. Also, they have a great Facebook page you should follow. Uh, Chris Brewer, who works there with Bill, has been a guest on of mine on Cars Yeah. He is fantastic at PR and keeping everything connected. So listeners, we'll put links on Bill's show notes page here so you can find all of these. And I would encourage you, if you're going to be anywhere near Florida, or if you're anywhere in the world, plan on going to Florida for this event, because it is a premier, premier event. And as a reminder, you can listen to Bill uh, on the Cars Yow website. Uh, again, I've had him on the show twice, so I appreciate you. Now you're a three-peater for me, Bill. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, one thing I also want to say is we're doing the cars of Harley Earl. So we'll have the Y-Job, the Sabre, a couple of cars that hadn't been seen before. 
And uh, we're really excited about that. You know, we got so many, you got to do these shows with themes. You got to tell a story just yes. to lay cards out on the field and say, here's a, here's an interesting card. Doesn't work for us. Yeah. It's fantastic. Well, Bill, Hey, thank you for spending some time with us. I know you're if knee deep in alligators or ankle deep or neck deep in alligators. Oh, they're, 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 they're swimming over us right now. Are they? Okay. Well, I really appreciate you taking time to spend with Keith and I. This has been absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Keith. Thank, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bill. Oh, I look pleasure. forward to seeing you in just a couple of weeks. Uh, make it three or four, will you? Don't make it a couple. But by the way, you can learn a lot more program about the or two on, uh, from Sports Car Market because we have a guide to that whole weekend because it's really a whole weekend full of events that Bill is putting on down there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Get your hands on this guide because it will help guide you through everything you're going to experience. You want to be at the Friday seminar because we got Roger Pinsky, Jim Hall, John Meekham, Rusty Wallace, Rick Mears, and George Palmer. Oh, my gosh. You know a few people, don't you, Bill? It's my life. <laughs> absolutely. It's Bill, thank you again for being a guest here. You first listeners, thank you for tuning in today. This has been great fun. We'll see you at the Amelia Island Concourse. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Keith. You're welcome. Bye-bye. 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 Hey, Mark Green here. If you love the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast, you'll want to listen to my Cars Yeah podcast, where over five years, I've interviewed over 1,000 475 inspiring automotive enthusiasts. You'll have free access to my guest shows five days a week. These are amazing people who share their world around cars, trucks, and motorcycles. I take a deep dive into their businesses, and they share with you how they've wrapped their passion for vehicles into their lives. Plus, go to the CarsYeah.com website and hit the free book button, and I'll email you my free filler-up book. It's an ebook filled with beautiful fuel filler fun, and inspiring quotes from my past guests. Once subscribed, you'll get my weekly blog as well. You can find all the Cars Yeah shows on CarsYeah.com or on any mobile device using your podcast app. Just search for Cars Yeah Podcast and subscribe today. That way you'll get both Buy, Sell, Hold with Keith and me and the Cars Yeah Podcast delivered right to your mobile device or your computer. Thanks for listening. We hope to have shed some light today on the collector car market. You can listen to all the Buy, Sell, Hold podcasts at sportscarmarket.com and carsyeah.com. You'll find hundreds of inspiring automotive enthusiasts on the Cars Yeah website as well. Be sure to log into sportscarmarket.com and subscribe to Keith's SCM weekly newsletter. You'll find digital issues, insider event guides, and price guides, along with our platinum database, column profiles, classifieds, and many other resources. Join Keith and Mark next week to hear from another automotive industry leader who will help you determine when to buy, sell, or hold.